The councillors, when they clear the with the meeting open at 12 o'clock, uh, being live streamed via Zoom, recordings of the council meetings, the parts thereof cannot be copied, recorded, reproduced, reused, or transmitted without the prior written consent of the general manager. The meeting is being recorded and made publicly available on council's website, and persons attending the meeting should refrain from making any defamatory statements. Council acknowledges that this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Wiradjuri, Gamangara, and Durham people and respect the history and culture of the only folk past and present. Uh, now, has anyone had any communication with uh, Councillor McQuiggan or Councillor Watt? Well, I need support from Councillor McQuiggan, but I want to call them back to give them Okay, well, I'll assume he's on his way and I can just receive him from Councillor Watt. Um, so there's no legal left at the moment. Uh, any declarations of interest? No. Confirmation of minutes. Uh, the recommendation is that the minutes of the June 7, 2022 works meeting be accepted. Do I have a minute and a second that? Council Hayden. Councillor Graham. Council Hayden. Yes. Councillor Graham. Councillor Tucker. Uh, thank you, Chair. Definitely to point out the game. I did previously, but uh, I was on leave of absence, but I am listed as having voted on a couple of occasions. Might be too late to, to change it. But yep. that well, in. okay. Well, through, through, through the chair, you did in fact, we acknowledged that in July when these minutes were in fact confirmed. Yeah. The minutes we provide here is to give councillors a bit of an idea about what we've come across yeah. and, and any business laws that come out of that. So it was noted in July when we were there. Any notes arising from the, the minutes? We've already been in okay. Yep. Yeah. It's just a, it's it's not an anomaly. We just like to put them in there to show councils that what what we talked about the last one. Uh, item zero five zero one road naming of a new road off Springfield Street in Oberon. And the recommendation is the council provided preferred road name to be forwarded to the New South Wales Blue Lottery Name Board. Now before we um, the way we've usually done these sorts of things is that if there's been names provided, we'll we a bit of a vote on that internally to see what is acceptable for the most councillors. Uh, but other names can be accepted. Uh, and in particular, the ones on the second last paragraph may be in play. So move in a second, please. Councillor Hayden, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Hayden. Yeah, I don't um, support the names that have been submitted. Mm -hmm. So, what name do you say? Um, I would like to see names of the first land folders in the area, our pioneer settlers. Do you have a specific name? Um, yeah, Beale, um, Thomas, um, Griffiths. Councillor McCarthy? Um, yeah, I'll have the report, but um, if we go around the corner, around the room for names. Well, I'll, I'll just wait and see if any other ones come up. Okay, I'll, I'll just support the Collie one, return servicemen, um, hook up settlement of Essington Park. So, yep. Anyone else like to voice an opinion? And family still in the area. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. I would um, support Collie. Colleague, um, I was happy with either Ollie Close or Colleague Close. Yeah, um, I do quite like the idea of naming it after the person who, who owned the land for a long time. I'm equally happy with Colleague. Yeah. Okay, I'll 
องอยู่ดีอยู่ที่เวลาครับครับเดี๋ยวต้องเลยครับ Just kidding. 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 Uh, I'll put the motion that Holly Close is the preferred name for this particular street. In favour? Just, just to clarification, we would need an alternative in case they find one to move go or something like that. You just won't be able to close. So through, through the chair, we put on the search beforehand. Okay. Well, Holly seems to be okay, but. Okay. All right. It has happened before, so if you want to do an alternative, more than happy for you to come with an alternative. But I'm reasonably confident, based on our searches, that Collie would be exceptional. But I'm more than happy to have an alternative because that the save is coming back if there is a if there is an issue. So the second option may be a good one to have in case. We've previously had a second option in these instances. Just, just remember the rubbish with the Graham one. Yes, yeah, it's, it's in Bathurst, and the criteria is 40 kilometers away, but they still knocked it out. That's why I see it. All right, good for an old, old anyone got an exception from Alton? Yeah. Bill? Holly? 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 Oh, Holly. Holly. All right, so Holly as the primary and Holly as the secondary. I'll put the motion all those in favor. Motion is passed. All right, item 0502, Kevin Gutter Capital Works Program for 2023 20 to 2030. Recommendation. Mm -hmm. Recommendation that the council adopt the seven year rolling capital works program for curb and gutter improvement as listed in this report, commencing from the 2023 24 financial year. And council can continue to consider an allocation of $100,000 annually from the town improvement fund to the street drainage within the overall town improvement district, while the town improvement fund continues to exist. Move and second that. Council checking. Council Pimba, Council Kipney. Uh, thank you, Mr. I think this is uh, quite a good uh, initiative and to have, um, have a set plan and a timeline um, for some of those streets that people have been asking about. We can now give them an answer and say that it's, in, it's going to be in the capital work program for a particular year, a particular time frame is good. Um, people are more happy if they can put it, if we can put a date or a year on it. And uh, I think it's a very good initiative um, to fully support it. Through Council Timber? Um, I have nothing further to add. Any other councillors? Yeah. Don't support the idea. Um, the only thing is, you take C. Um, don't we need to do um, drainage work prior to this work being carried out? And then some few more of the other cases. Uh, in the chair, certainly there will be a, a number of stormwater drains that will need to go under the road and drain to the northern side. So uh, if we're inclusive in when we do the budgeting for that, uh, now we've sort of put in a big figure there of $100,000. So certainly it may take a little bit more in some instances. Uh, that could be one case. Okay, thank you. Any other councillors? Put the motion. All in favour? Half down, please. Item 0503, Pitchman Resheating Program, Overland Council Road Network, and the recommendations of the report. Item 0503 is received with information. Move and second, please. Move and second. 
Cancel copy. Cancel copy. Cancel copy. Cancel copy. Oh, no, I think we've got to do this back down. We need to make sure we saw we start reshooting these roads that they're up to scratch to be reached. Uh, sure it's no surprise that I'm pleased to see this report. It's something I've been pushing for a while. I know it seems like a, a big expense, and it is in fact a big expense, but the idea of doing a regular reseal is to minimize the long-term costs of our assets over the life of the asset. Uh, if, uh, if, if you let it go, then you, you're just bringing forward the time when the whole road will have to be reconstructed. Even when a seal might appear to be sound on the surface, what happens is the bitumen oxidizes, it gets brittle under traffic. There are fine cracks in it, let the water in and it just accelerates potholes and life phases. So we we certainly need to put more effort into uh, providing money for regular reseals. The, the frequency that, that has been happening recently, based on that on the table on page 22, is just nowhere near enough. It, it will get to roads will have to be reconstructed before they even reach their first reseal. On the table on the bottom of page 23, I'm happy enough with the figures suggested for urban and for regional. I think we need to push the rural seal up a bit. It shows 400,000 per year. I'd suggest trying to pick that up 500,000 per year, which is the same as what we just allocated last month, probably the previous month, out of the flood grant. And, and if we can keep that amount going, it would bring the recurrence interval down to around about 28 years, which is, is uh, getting a bit close to the month. We still should try and get them down a bit more, but uh, I think uh, 500,000 per year would be comparable with uh, historically what this council is doing each year. Mm -hmm. um, and and just finally, I'm, I'm hoping that over the in the early months of the new year, we might be able to have a, a roads funding workshop similar to the rates workshop that, that we just had and another one coming up just to look at uh, the allocations and how we're going to provide funds for capital works and reseals and making. So they're my comments and uh, I'm happy to second them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, First thing is, I was wondering where it says urban, rural, residential. Um, obviously, some of our villages need their streets re um, sealing. So I'm not sure where the villages fit in. Does it fit in within urban? Does it fit fit in within rural, or does it? Yes. No, through the chair, rural, rural sealed at the minute. I didn't split out villages per se, but it fits in the rural sealed area. It does fit in there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and following on from that, when I read page 23, I'm thinking, okay, I fully support this, but if we do not continue to get the federal assistance grant, state grants, um, we're going to have to dig somewhere to find this money, actually. Um, because if I'm looking at this, uh, we are looking and taking account of what the council packet for about 500,000 for rural, we're looking at 750,000 extra a year, or does that, or do we deduct from that what we're already spending on resales? Um, we'd be looking, sorry for the chair, but we'd be looking for additional funding. Uh, so council would have to either one, find savings, or secondly, allocate funding from- But um, that's the 750,000. That's right. So we have to find, it, it wouldn't be the 750 taking, if I take Council Packer's point about 500,000 for rural, it wouldn't be the 750 less what we spend already. Oh, look, sorry. So, look, certainly <laughs> the rural seal, 500,000 plus the urban component. So, the regional roads component is taken from the block grant. Uh, so, it's already a given per se for regional roads. Yeah. It's the 500 plus the $50,000 for the urban uh, residential. The rural residential component, so we around 550 is really what we'd be looking at. 
where we get that funding. So the 200,000 already comes from the government, so what we're saying? That's right. It comes from the state government already through the regional roads block grant yeah. allocation, which is spe specifically for regional roads. And that's sufficient, you think? Uh, well, again, we get more than 200,000, but we take a, a proponent of that, which is 200, what I'm suggesting, out of that block grant to put it uh, towards uh, the network of 104 kilometres of regional road network. Okay, so the net amount we have to find, addition if we don't get federal assistance grants, et cetera, is five, say 550,000 if we take the 500,000 that council takes. Yeah. I, I just need, I think we need clarity as to exactly what do we need. Yes. Sorry. No. Because that, I didn't, when I read this, I thought I think some of this is covered somewhere else, but I wasn't, I just wanted to know the next thing. So when we discuss this at either the roads workshop, can we make sure we actually know what the figure is where we're looking at. So through the chair, this report seeks to give council a little bit of an understanding yeah. on where we could start at. Right? We all understand that the notion around Chris's report, you make a very, very poignant comment in terms of if you are going to do more of this, what are you going to do less of? Yeah. Uh, so what we've tried to do is also indicate in this about, okay, we've had some asset data done on our roads and our buildings. Uh, in that, it gives an understanding about where our roads are in terms of how well they're, they've held up against the substantial amounts of rain. It doesn't change what Councillor Tucker is saying in terms of how do you fix them and how do you resell them and what you need to do. But there is going to have to be a conversation if you want to go down this path about what you don't want to do. Whether you want to, in fact, say, well, here is our roads component. We don't propose to change any of it, but from current and within that roads component, we change what we do. That may be a way. You might turn around and say, well, we want to spend more on roads and buildings. It purely will be a conversation that we have moving on. This report, as suggested, is a way to get that on the table to say, well, if you want to go down a path of, of, of urban renewals or renewals in your road network, this is what Chris is saying we're going to do. But, by goodness, mm -hmm. um, I think what um, Councillor Tucker said is very wise about having a workshop because we currently we have a priority roads metrics in which we have an agenda of, sorry, a, a list of roads of which we prioritise of, of resealing or, or a ceiling, not resealing, yeah. sealing a certain amount per year, et cetera. So when we have this workshop, I think we have to put all that together and have a look and say, okay, if something has to give, where has it got to give? Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And the That's worst case, what I find the most difficult thing here is that this is a zero sum game. Yeah. If you take $750,000 to add on top of the 75% of our budget that we spend on roads, a lot has got to give to be able to do that. Um, and you've got to be ready to, to accept the, the, the consequences of that. Yes, yeah, we also don't have it. I, I found this list informative, informative that, it, that it misses bits. And, and I agree with you, we need to have a very clear idea of where the money is currently coming from and, um, and what the net figure really is. And I think. Um... As Councillor Tucker said, if we could have a workshop with all that set out on papers, knowing exactly how a whole road expenditure spent, where we're going, what this would mean, um, and also I do, um, I do think um, that our villagers, as I've said, do need some priority with their roads because some of them are dreadful. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, as indicated, this gives us a good start. Let's start doing similar what we do with the rates workshop and say, well. If we do this, what does that look like? If we do that, what does that look like? Oh, I'm the, I commend the paper, but I'm just saying, I think we need to go now a little bit. Yep. No. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know I've already spoken, but just uh, briefly, the other point I had intended to make was my understanding is that over the last few years, the reseals that have been done on local roads have just been what, what staff feel can be spared out of the maintenance budget. There hasn't been a specific allocation for resales. And I think that needs to change. I think resales need to go into capital works. So it is there specifically for resales. And, and that's part of what we need to account for when we have our workshop and then set our budgets. 
um, you know, through the chair, I can confirm that there has been <clears throat> minimal money set aside and, and as capital and uh, improvement for reseals, uh, no doubt. Uh, yes, maintenance has taken a bit of a cop out, but again, it's that balancing act of where are we going to find that additional funding to assign it either the capital type program, as you say, and then getting granular, I think, from Councillor Gibbons point of view, then mm -hmm. to which roads are they going to roll out against against your uh, you know your asset management plan. And the five hundred thousand from flood damage, is that in the current plan for you or the next plan for you? That those really will be done. Uh, current. Current. Okay. So well, yeah. in both yeah. yeah. through the chair would be both. That money has to be spent by I think in January next year. So it'll go across both budgets. In mean, January. January 2024. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, sorry. But not next year, next year's three weeks away. The following next year, 24. Yeah. No, we'll be across two budgets. Any other councillors? All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. And just on that, and we'll note that the future workshop is as a joint. Item 0 504 the Get New South Wales Active Program 2324 application for shared pathway at O'Connell. Recommendation is that Council endorse the O'Connell shared pathway to Fish River project as a priority active transport plan project for the overall LGA. The Council submit an application for $362,000 to get New South Wales Active Program by 06 January 2023. The Council approve a $36,000 co contribution to the project. From the section 711 development contribution fund. Move in a second, please. Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Trimbar. Councillor McCarthy. Um, yeah, number three, I take it, is the 36,000. I support the report, but I thought the 711 thing was for rural roads only and, and didn't fit into the, um, the footpath contribution. And that's on page 26, second paragraph. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't think it fit what the money's derived for. Through, through the there's section 711 are our old section 94 yep. funds. We create, um, when we collect money for development contributions, it's for a number of things. Yep. There's rural roads, there's also open space, community facilities. Um, the, I think there's a emergency services contribution within there. Yep. And that falls into that, it'll be in that open space uh, community facilities. Um, section of that so it doesn't come out of the rural roads so no no it can't come out of the rural roads contribution that's fine there's, there's only about seventy thousand in that fund in there um, through the chair there is a there isn't a lot but there's enough to cover that the the application doesn't require a co-contribution from councils however it's strongly advised for council to in fact support this and we're looking at this space on the on the back of a uh, uh, potential pedestrian footpath that's going to assist the O'Connell kids going across the Fish River. So aren't we looking to buy into that in a way that um, meets the objectives of the state government? Yeah, I, I see local pressure's been put on our parliamentarians to even though if you do a traffic count as some of the councils require on roads. Some days there's no one go across that bridge on the push bike or walk across. So we'll walk across. Well, that's your alternative. <laughs> if you're a parent, you wouldn't you'd, you'd run them to school. But anyway, I, I, I'm just wondering until we you know. But my biggest concern is is um, the, the money out of the 7 Eleven account because sooner or later we've got to find funds to redo the board down at O'Connell and give it so that we can use it. So we need to have a source of money to that to come out of. And I thought some of that was the 7 Eleven fund public open space was used last time when we had a shortfall. We're about 83,000 short. Remember? Our I engineer. Might, yeah, I could take that on notice if we technical that engineer, time. second in charge at the time, never done a spreadsheet and we had to find eighty three thousand dollars or something short for. More than happy to take that on notice and provide that. As long as we've got money to do that. Four in statement, that's all. Through the chair, there'll be a separate report to that to talk about the infrastructure relocation, and that includes the, yeah, the, the powering and the like, but outside the actual way, Connell Ground earthworks. 
which aren't part of the grant funding at the minute. So it would have to be a separate report. Yeah, I, I understand that, but yeah. you had something there and you've taken it away. It needs to be reinstated, even where it is. Oh, look, it's it's there. It's, it's just, not there. It's, it's, just, use it. it's the power from obviously the amenity now across to the uh, to, to the new filling point is, is all that needs to be done. You know, but yeah, okay. we can talk about that. But, yeah. Okay. Um, I fully support this, and it's um, it's great that we're talking about this because if we get the walkway and the bridge, it doesn't really do much until we get a footpath that will allow the full connection all the way back down to the wreck ground, and uh, yeah, children will use it to ride. Um, no one would let their children walk across that bridge currently. You have to run pretty fast, and you have to time it when the footpath is going through. So, yeah, great initiative. How long did you take to get from? That's why they do so really much near as well. Need to be the strikers. This will be game of you move. Councillor, Councillor Hayden. I'm happy to support this. Um, I do have a question about the connectivity that's going to be on the across the bridge. Is that is council going to be on board with that as well? Because we shouldn't have to keep funding the whole thing across the bridge because they need to come to the party and meet staff around. Um, through through the chair, what Bathurst do is entirely up to Bathurst, but I think that from the conversations we've had, they are equally as as um, keen to see some sort of connectivity. Because that's that, good, that, that's good. Because that's their eligibility. Correct. We will not be. We won't be fully really support the bridge for the pedestrian. Correct. Yeah. 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 General Major, I have one question. When we were down at Papal Park. The politicians as they were telling us they were going to do this feasibility study. Yep. The document they had had the bridge on the up, sorry, the footbridge on the up river side. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have underpasses on both sides of the bridge there. This is on the other side. No, no, this is the western the side of the gone, the down river side. Mm. I think it was under. So there'll be yeah. underpass uh, under the bridge. Under the bridge from the school, under the bridge. And up on the footbridge across, and then an exit into Havel Park, and then under the bridge as well to the other side, the other part. Correct. So that will say you'll have a walking path under the under the bridge formation to the bridge. The actual yeah. bridge stretch yeah. on the west. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get about. So it winds itself up under the through the chair. Yeah. The the bridge itself will be yeah. above. Mm -hmm. The under the <laughs> may not be. <laughs> I have one question. Um, so it talks about um, with the avenue, is there going to have to be some realignment of, because of the trees, or will that not be impact? Uh, for the footpath? Sorry. No. So through the chair, it's meant to straight off the bridge, 1.4 kilometres between there and Beaconsville Road. Mm -hmm. And depending on where the funding lands us, we may be able to get a smidge further. I mean, it wouldn't be. My idea of impacting on the avenue for is like ah. going in behind them again, and if it's got to be a little oh, bit narrow, it's very good path there, isn't it? Not on that end, no, no, no. no. I've ended it on the southern end of the red, red ground. Oh, sorry, yes, there are a few trees there, mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's really clear that the, the engineering issue from our perspective is probably going to be that Beacon Store Road and Connor Road intersection and what mm -hmm. we do. In that space, but as Chris highlighted, it's it's something that's just going to need some conversation with the <coughs> authority around what that looks like. Mm. Councillor Tucker, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, that handily leads into what I was going to ask and suggest that might already be the plan. I'm not sure, but uh, my thought was where that existing path comes up to that southeast corner of the rec ground. So where it's going to go from there. And my suggestion that it might be worth looking at would be to go around the southern and western side of Lindell Green and cr then cross Beacon Steel Road some distance back from the intersection rather than right at the intersection, which is a real safety concern. And, it, and that would also provide a, a better connection in the rec ground from both directions. So, so through the chair as part of the master plan, the access is some distance off that intersection. You are correct. Um, and, and 
crossing point for this path that would be then extending up to the school of the bridge and then the school. So where it crosses Beaconsfield Road wouldn't be right at the Conwell Road intersection. It would be like 100 metres back or whatever. But it would probably be near where the entrance to the, yeah. the yeah. Um, rec ground is now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's what I was hoping. Because for. otherwise there's another gate down there on the left just past Liberal Green. Yeah. People access the trees and then you need to come yeah. down. I don't think so. Agree. It's, it's, Plan with I'm stuff to go along O'Connell Road and, yeah. and cross Beaconsfield Road at the intersection. That's a, uh, several dead kids waving down. I, I don't think I'll even let you do it. It's really tight, even to And right on the crest. Yeah. On the back. The crest on the back corner or but, yeah. but if you went up the eastern side of Lindell Green and then duck back, too many people yeah. wouldn't bother to take it. They would just cross straight yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, really We'll go jump inside. Um, this path is two, two and a half meters wide. It's concerned about um, have we the width there between the London plane trees and the fence and the drain and all that there. It, it's and, and the other one that we put the granite path in, it's nowhere near this wide. So, Look, uh, is this a requirement, the 2.5 metre wide? It, it, it is in a sense of being more of a shared pedestrian sort of bicycle path. Okay. Uh, but yes, we recognise that there's going to be some pinch points that may not necessarily get the full two and a half. Uh, again, a bit of ingenuity may have to come into it where we can consistently keep the two and a half. But if we can't, well, maybe the case. And again, it doesn't have to be a straight path by no means. It can weave a little bit and be a bit ingenious. So. It's just wondering whether it's not uh, to have a talk to the landowner and maybe gain that extra meter. That was all. Yeah, look, that may be the case. So, look, I think okay. the landowner, I have spoken to the landholder previously, going back over four months ago, and I don't know if that he was objection to it. He may still be in the same position. Okay, thank you. That that can't form part of the current base. I, I realize that, but that's what just. All right, thank you, councillors. I'll put the motion all those in favor. Item zero five zero five. The structure betterment grant applications and recommendations of report item zero five zero five is received with information. The council lodged two applications to the infrastructure betterment fund for the Arkstone realignment project and the Campbell River deviation project. The council prioritised the Arkstone Road realignment project as its first priority. Councillor McKibben, Councillor Hayden, Councillor McKibben. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I see these as two quite um, eccentric projects um, in this area. The Arkstone Road, we all know about its continuous slip down the hill. Um, and as you can see from the photograph, and I've traveled again again because of today, that's probably slightly worse than that today. Um, there are council crews down there trying to do some repairs, but it's just an endless endless work effort. every time they repair it they have to come back so i'm more than happy to commend these um, the general manager and i were at the joint organization where we specifically asked the minister about what, whether this betterment fund would take account of these types of projects where realignments and new infrastructure first so i'm very happy that uh, i it up um, i'm very happy to recommend uh, uh, this in three parts Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor. Yes, I'm happy to um, support what Councillor McKibben has, has said also, and this is a priority. Um, so. yeah. Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have no problem with either of those projects, but I just want to check if we are certain that Arkstone Road is eligible under this particular funding. Because uh, meant to be related to uh, resilience to disasters. Well, the, the landscape of Arkstone Road, to, to my understanding, is not really flood or other disaster related. It's just been an ongoing thing over a long time that that's been happening. And uh, I would hate to see it not back if, on account of it being assessed as not being disaster related. So. I just want to make sure we're certain that it's eligible. So, so through the chair, um, we have had some conversations about this and they, they've encouraged us to put that in. Um, the second reason about having a priority is that 
if the first one doesn't get up, the second one doesn't fall over. So we're going to put two applications in. Um, take the point that it's not necessarily one relating to this disaster. However, what it does by changing or improving the betterment of that road is to minimise its, its capability of failing in another declared natural disaster, which is what the fund also talks about. Thank you. Councillor McCarthy. And yes, um, just number three, I, I think the um, Campbell's River Road would be more beneficial to the community than uh, the Arkstone one. I know we, we want them both done, but you know, I, I see that the Campbell's River would be more beneficial to the community rather than, anyway, that's where I sit. Well, you vote against it. Yeah, so, 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 you, you want to put up an amendment? Well, I'll put an amendment up that we um, prioritise the Campbell's River Road. Second, it's the number one priority. All right, we have a move and a second up. Anyone, anyone else want to speak to that amendment? Councillor Oh. Yes, I uh, I have some sympathy for that uh, in the in the road in the amount of road use. In that I do think Campbell's River gets a lot more road use than probably Arkstone. Um, and obviously with the amount of logging trucks on it, it is pulling it apart. So um, even though I recommend the first one, I I do have some sympathy for prioritisation. I suppose. Um, Yeah, I mean the Arkstone Road one is slipping is also is slipping away literally. I mean Campbell's River Road still is in existence, whereas Arkstone Road is actually disappearing. That's my only issue. So I'm um, having having the amendment put. I'm I'm not I'm sure of how I'll vote down this. I'm, 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 I find it a very difficult situation. All right, I just appreciate uh, uh, what any... my colleagues have said. What's the speak for? Questions there? Which one's more expensive? Mm. Uh, you can really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One said 1.8, one said 1.7. Yeah. It's a ballpark at this stage, but yeah. Councillor Trimbar? Um, I have a question as well. So, after showing, as we know, we saw that slippage issue. Would it become an unusable road if we don't do anything? Uh, mm -hmm. And by prioritising Handles River? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what, right. So we sort of answer the question. Well, what would it mean you have to close that section of the Arkstone yeah. Road and temporarily reroute it, potentially through Forest Creek Corporation land uh, as a temporary means to whenever funding become available? So whenever funding became available. That's why we looked at both. Potentially, you could get both, but you may only get one. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it's yeah, that decision. Yes, um, I'd like to see that Arkstone remain prioritised for the simple reason that it is falling off the side of the hill. It will become unusable and it could cause damage or death and destruction should something serious arise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You want to have to say, Councillor Jenkins? Um, yeah, just one question. In in the design that's been undertaken at the limit, um, how much realignment is uh, planned there? Or are we going? Are we realign on the Arkstone Road? Sorry, are we realigning it more to the southern side, going back up the hill towards Ballarat? The yes, the western side. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's the western side. No, no, you're right. So it's around about nine hundred to a kilometre. Yeah, long distance. Yeah, yeah. So you go across the yeah, take the first corner. Yeah, across the old road. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. One or two water tributaries there. Get the final design, which we're working on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the Arkstone Road simply because mm. of the state of deterioration there mm. probably the priority. All right. Well, everyone's had a say now, so I'll put the amendment, and that is that council prioritise the. Uh, Campbell's River Road realignment project as its first priority. All those in favour? Carthy and, and um, Tucker against? Remainder. So the motion, the 
amendment is proceeded. Uh, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? All right, that's passed unanimously. So we now have the Pakistan vote as our priority. Good discussion. All right, item 0506, fixing local roads, pothole repair grant program. Recommendation is the report 0506 is received as information. Councillor Hayden, Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden? Yes, I'm happy to move the recommendation, and I do believe that we have approved some of those through the chair, just by way of information. At the time of writing, we didn't. We sort of had the number, but we weren't allowed to say anything because we didn't know when the minister was going to release it. But he's now released it. It's three hundred, about three hundred and forty thousand dollars that we secured to to assist in this program. So it's going to help um, for this year and next year's operational plans as well. So it'll be one of those things that we include as part of this ongoing works program conversation. We'll expect. Put the motion. Sorry, Thank you. I'm more than happy to second this. I just have a quick question. In fixing the potholes, are we going to be using our bitchy paved machine or are we actually going to be using hot mix? Uh, through the chair, we get a combination of cold mix, uh, jet patcher, and or heavy patching. So we can we can use uh Say a hot mix if we had to use or cut out a section of road home. Um, yes, so so traveling along Mount David Road today, for instance, I noticed there's a section probably a bit longer than this room, Council Chair, that had actually been re resheeted. With does that come in under the pothole repair grant program? Uh, if it, and sorry, it probably doesn't now because we haven't it's from the first of December. But if it was if if we did that at a fall within it. Uh, no, it wasn't. So resealing roads, no. But if the potholes are so bad in a section, like the size of this roof. So technically speaking, if it was a patch repair, you'd have to yes, still apply a new surface of one of those three combinations. Right. right. So if you're going to do a so it wouldn't fall within this grant. So you'll have a pothole measuring table out here, would um <laughs> Being careful, I mean, if I'm doing the same, well, it isn't a problem, then it could be seen as a, yeah. a whole. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We've got, we've got sections of our road that have just got a potholes. section of complete potholes. So, yeah. so would we fall within that? So, that, through, yeah. so through the chair, we'll leave that for the so. <laughs> so, through the chair, we have a number of programs that we've had it approved. Well, we've got an environmental, environmentally affected roads program, we now have a pothole program, we have a maintenance program, we have all these things, and it's it's going to be quite a, um, I won't say a challenge because it's never a challenge to spend money, especially in the engineering in the world, but um, just to make sure that we fit those programs and those numbers around the right program. So it's going to be a challenge for these two guys to in fact put those things together. But look, it's 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 a good problem to have. Let's go with that, yeah. I fully understand where you're coming from and it's a double-edged sword, yeah. Some roads are yeah, to an extent, aren't they? Yeah. Council Tucker? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question Do we need to be able to demonstrate that we have done an extra three hundred and something thousand dollars worth of potholes happening compared with what we would have done if we didn't get the grant? Or is it just that's money for potholes and we can spend that money and save the money that we were going to spend and use it for other stuff? Well, through through the chair, we would never say no. that, Councillor. We're always no, no, we that. Say that. that's funny the appropriate way. <laughs> and uh, the fact we're being recorded at this game yeah, online, right. I'll, I'll reiterate that we, we certainly would spend it appropriately. Whether we can spend that much would be something that each that we'd have to have a look at at the end of each plan. Right. But, but I think, I think we need to be some sort of reporting progress to do there it. Is. That we have done that amount extra than what we would have done otherwise. Yes, I yes. think, so. think councillors, that if you yeah. look at what happened in the latter part of the last financial year, we were significantly yeah. overspent on basically pothole maintenance. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be the same this year, I think. And that $340,000 is probably going to be yeah, very, very well spent. 
Correct. I don't think it'll have a problem justifying it. Yeah. No. There is a funding deed, and yes, there's a reporting process with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other council on the carpet? Yeah, I, I'm still after a clarification on what Andrew asked. I understand out there at Mount David that they've, they've been out there and the jet patch has patched it. And then there's an area that the potholes are that many, it needs ripping up and, and sealing. So the money doesn't come into the. No, so the, the, that road is now at an extent that it needs a whole reconstruction, to be honest. Uh, look, I can put a patch on a patch. It'd probably be like the Taranar Road, then it could be wrong, but ultimately it's at a point where it needs to reconstruct. We have. Excuse me, we have put a grant application to Mount David Road to, to reset it slightly. That's correct. It's yeah. independent. We have Sorry, it. Yeah. No, 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 so, it, gone, yeah. but, so what that. happens to what's left there with all the puddles? Do we wait until the rate payers can't drive on it now? Or, or what happens? Like no, we no. patch the, around the area that's firm and then it's that many in that next section and we've just left it. And is that what we're going to do? Just leave it? I'm not going to just leave it. I think it's a matter of maintaining it to an extent where I can keep it in a satisfa satisfactory state until some of these funding things are announced or maybe raise recovery and consider that as, a, as an optional job. It's a really operational program for delivery program. So it's not a matter of just leaving it. I, I wouldn't say that. But yes, it is in a, of, of an extent that it needs doing. And not unlike a section on Dog Rocks Road, it's, there's a section there too. So it's at a point where it's beyond the, just pothole repairs and or patching. And again, some of these fundings uh, certainly have guideline elements to them, and if they don't stick to it, then uh, they get us for one day. Well, I'll ask the question again. We've come down and we've gone this far with the jet patcher, then we've left the next section, and then we've commenced further down with the jet patcher. What happens to the potholes there that are now there with soil showing through. So we don't repair them or we they should well I'll take it on notice. Yeah. I, well, that's correct in that end. Not fully Sorry. Yeah. There's an area there where the jet packs, yes, then yeah. they've stopped. Yeah. Then there's commenced again. I'll, I'll, look, I'll take it on notice. I'll have a look for myself. Yeah. Okay. Three more councillors. Thank you. Thank you for the motion all over in favor. Yes. Five to two. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. All right, we've passed unanimously. Item zero five zero seven Capital Works Delivery Program, progress update 2223. Item 0507 be received as information. Council Hayden. Council McKibbin. Council Hayden. Yes, I'm happy to move the report. And it's pretty far as well, and glad to see all this. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, this is a good report. I think it gives us a good um, progress on most of our projects. I was very happy to see the Gantt chart. Obviously, we can't we can't see it in a paper copy, but looking at it online and enlarging it and zooming in on it, it was quite good to be able to see that. Um, that's on page 36. And um, we note that there are some projects that have been affected um, by obviously the wet weather. Um, there is a comment about the basalt retaining wall. Um, and I was, I think we deal with that later in the business papers, probably, or maybe on the, on the comment. Um, I was confused as to which is to. As to whether we had the same contractor now, new contractor for both walls, or we're still using the old contractor for one wall and a new contractor for one wall, uh, the pages wall. I was a little confused, but I can, I'm quite happy to speak to have that answered in the common discussion if that's more appropriate. Uh, I look like I could wrap it up pretty simply is that, yes, the one local provider who was going to do the whole lot of work did tender a price for the puddings as well. Yeah. However, there was some uncertainty in there and he withdrew that. Yeah. And hence there was two contractors. So one being doing the footing, specializing in footings and I like in terms of the concrete work and the masonry guy obviously coming in and doing the, the block work and stone work. So that's why the, let's go off the rose ball in the common is set up that way. And then there's also then the bearded road yeah. containing what needs to be done. So probably we haven't gone across that Path with him yet, but I'm assuming it may be the same approach or similar. 
So are we still getting Glenroy stone to do the actual yes. stonework on the three walls? Yes, that's what I'm yes. getting the Bathurst contract, if I call him that, to do the footings for the three walls? Uh, well, at least the two at this stage, at this point in time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was just a little bit confused. I don't know if other councils understood it completely. So we still, the local contractor is still doing the actual stone facade or the stonework. Yes, correct. Because he did have a timing issue as well. So he's been able to fit us in to do those walls? Uh, so he will be delivering Wednesday. This Wednesday, he'll be delivering uh, block work and stone to site and be commencing maybe early next week. Early, early next week, yeah. Yeah. With so which one is starting on? The common rose wall, wall below the, uh, the rose wall below. The rose the wall? wall? Yep. Then the treasure's wall? Yeah. Well, yes. And then the Edith Road, right? Well, that, that is the pattern we'll be following at the stages. And he's got the capacity to do that. Uh, well, I know there was a report after saying that he, you know, his capacity was an issue. Uh, look, I think in the timing of delivering these, so certainly he's a resourcing issue. But again, you know, if when we get on to the Edith Road, it's obviously going to be more of a dilemma where potentially the road will have to be shut, uh, maybe for a period of time while he does that to try to expedite it. But anyway, that's. At the minute, he's doing the, the road wall, then the living treasures walls, two of, two of, and now I assume he, you know, he may well be in a position then to progress to the bit of the road wall. And again, that'll have to be a revision on that. Okay, and if if I could, um, Mr. Mayor, if I could just ask if, if the general manager has any update on the detailed design for the SDP from the public work. Um, through the, the progress, of, I mean, we've got it, yeah. but I'm not sure if they're going to play the early or later. Through the chair, our special project engineer is pushing public works to have that done as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And we continue to have that discussion with the public. So do we have we a date? It hasn't got confirmed. We haven't got a date. We're, we're asking <coughs> for that to occur now, yes. Okay. You can keep us surprised on that. As as you know, it's a project that I mm -hmm. think we as council are going very good. Have to progress quickly. Thank you. Real councillors, um, 34, the third one down, uh, got on precinct, recreation precinct. Um, we've commenced work down there again. So, that, will this mean that there'll be no um, pool of water behind Lindell Green now, or will the water go to that um, 600 mil culvert on the O'Connell Road? Uh, through the chair, yes, certainly that's the intent um, of doing the earthworks to try and minimize that, but again. Remembering there is only uh, a certain elevation of freeboard once that river rises. Of course, it will come back through that pipe. Wouldn't matter how many pipes you punch under that road, it'll just give more. No, no, so I'm concerned about up. on the other side. I'm concerned about the drainage on the recreation ground getting to that site. When you say the other side, the southern side near the ball? On the recreation ground, getting from the recreation ground where we're going to have the car park and the facilities. Yep. So there'll be no water lane. So it'll drain. Naturally, with the fill you're providing, that's that's the that way, cold. That's the way it's been trimmed at the minute. So it'll yeah, take out through the mm -hmm. through the natural topography of those drains that are set by by later levels on the machines. Yep, thank you. That's all I need. Council, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour? It was passed. Uh, zero five zero eight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quite effective councils, one million dollar rebuild and resilience booth. Recommendation is that council endorses the proposal to complete five hundred thousand dollars of bitumen reseal work on an eight kilometer section of Shooters Hill Road to repair and rejuvenate this important commuter and logging road. Council endorses the proposal to complete three hundred thousand dollars of gravel resheeting to Bastard Point, uh, Isabella, Beaconsfield, and Gibbons Road. To upgrade existing unsealed network conditions, the council accepts the proposal to invest $200,000 to rehabilitate quite effective low level causeway at Bailey's Lane to upgrade its disaster resilience capacity. I'll move a seconder, please. Councillor Hayden, Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden. Yes, I'm happy to support the recommendations and they're extremely needed. Thank you, Councillor McKibben. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to. Um, Second, the recommendation. But I also know there are a number of causeways um, in our area that require some work. 
but we have to start somewhere. There's a, um, from, a, from the recommendations, they seem the appropriate ones to start with. Yeah. Three sheets of course. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a query on number three, and, uh, and then I'll move an amendment to it. Um, it's suggesting 200,000, and it only mentions Bailey's Lane. Now, the one that we've just gone on in the Sill Road, I've started off at 80, I think it's ended up at about 100,000, but I would imagine Bailey's Lane is going to be a bit cheaper than Newman's. So I would have thought that if we just nominate Bailey's, we're going to have a fair bit of money left over. So I'm, I'm just suggesting an amendment, uh, which would be that council endorses the proposal to invest $200,000 to rehabilitate flood affected low level causeways with Bailey's Lane and the Brisbane Valley Creek Causeway on Sewell's Creek Road being the first, the highest priority. Are you moving out? Oh, I'm moving out. Of Amendment. The second of the third amendment, <coughs> Councillor McCarthy. Anyone else want to say? Do you want to say anything more? Well, well, I, I think that covers it. I just want to make sure that we've, we've got a couple of jobs on the go so that if there is money left over, we can just carry yep. on. Councillor McCarthy? Yes, um, I, I'd just like to see what we're going to do for the 200,000 and why it's required. <coughs> The 200,000 when we started doing the one down on uh, Moons Hill Road at 88,000. I understand that we might have to rethink and have more culverts along and things, but I'd like to see whether we find out whether we retain the existing causeway there um, and things like that, and, and, and why the cost is just shot out from 88,000 now to 200,000 to do one crossing. And that's why I support that we look at maybe one of the others as well. Because it just doesn't seem logical that, that you need to know what design's going to be there. If we're retaining the causeway, I, I don't think it should be as much because I use that road fairly fair bit, and, and the water gets up around 400 mil above that crossing and, and the extremity. So, you know, I just like to know a bit more about the money. Why do it there? Yeah, exactly what you said to Councillor McCarthy. I think it's similar in the design process. So whether you retain a causeway, whether you do box culverts, or potentially whether you do a single span bridge, and we're looking at all those options and potentially a single span bridge may be an option that gives us better uh, a better outcome at that location. So again, of the learnings of the different behaviours of different causeways, of course, Councillor Tucker has raised in, in, in you know, obviously looking at the number of causeways or hydrology type study. Uh, understand the behavior to say 400 mil. Um, it's certainly going to be more than $80,000 to do uh, a single sort of lane bridge. But again, we've only just got this funding. We haven't really had enough time to go through all the options in terms of the providers with those types of materials to give you a, um, a fixed cost just yet. So that's what we're saying. Moss Council said $200,000 for this particular undertaking. We, not, we may not spend all that, and it may be that we come back and say, well, yeah, Brisbane Valley may be something we need to do some investigation and get a design done on it. So uh, the residual funding of that 200 then could be put into rolling on with a particular program to address uh, low-level causeways. Uh, thank you. Uh, sort of answer to my question, which was I was about to ask, if the 200000 is looking at the back of the way, but you've also indicated that possibly you'd be looking at a single span um, pre cut concrete bridge, which clearly would be a lot more money if you went that way. So I'm presuming the 200,000 is allowing sort of for one of those options to be identified. And then, yes, if the additional money did become available, then perhaps it could go to Brisbane Valley Causeway. But is it a good idea to put it there now when you don't actually have any funding or quotations around these sort of solutions? Um. In response to that, I, I look again, I can only say that a fair portion of it would be taken up in construction, no doubt. Mm. It would be the residual then to identify what is the best structure, I suppose, for the next project would be Brisbane Valley Creek. Um, and then that will be a council determination in terms of where funds come for um, continued improvement program for different structures. Yeah. 
It's through the amendment that's been raised, so Council, that it, it, I think it talks to what you've said. Mm -hmm. So it still indicates that Bailey's Range your highest priority. It just mm -hmm. gives us another option to move this forward rather than having Chris come back <coughs> if they're 100,000, 100,000, yeah. we move straight into that rather than something being like if it was. 190,000 or we've got 10,000 left over, yeah. then I think that's when the report would need to come back to say, councillors, we've this one is the best option would be a bridge. We'll bring that back to you and say that's what we think we should do. Um, but at least that gives you a little bit more openness to, to move towards something if it wasn't the 200,000 or it wasn't what you anticipated that you would buy. I um... I support this amendment because I think it, it gives good direction to the council staff about what needs to be done. And it also provides flexibility in the allocation of the, the, the money. So I'm in favor of that. Anyone else? Well, you've already moved it, so you can get you can have last last well, say. Just be council. As, as, as the second or as the first as of the original. Uh, um, Motion. I'm happy to uh, support this event. Can I? Can I just sorry for people? Yes, let's have it. Um, I think there's probably the only issue that we would have in this space is that if it turns out that the Sills Creek Road has a huge cost attached to it, and there might be another one that has a less a less size uh, cost to yeah. it, and to say one was 150 and you had 50 left over and there was one that you could do for that, then a report would come back to to detail that council if that works with council and stuff. Well, the list is fluid, isn't it? Yeah, it hasn't been prioritized. It has scope for correct. Council Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, also what was in my, my mind in, in moving that was thinking that in the hydrology and the design uh it, especially if we're doing it uh, externally we could get both of them uh analyzed and designed initially so that even if we don't proceed with with Sills Creek Road we've, we've got the report and the design sitting there for, for some future all right um I will now move the um, Look at the uh, proposed amendment. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. So the amendment now becomes the motion. So I'll put the motion. All in favour? Passed unanimously. Mm -hmm. 0509. Modification application 10. 2022 22 2. Set at one Hawks Drive overall. Recommendations of the Council vary part C5.5 building pipeline, current DCP 2001 in relation to modification application 10 2022 22 2. For construction of a shed at lot 75 in DP 813020, being known as one Hawks Drive overall. The mission is to be called in accordance with Section 375A of the Local Government Act 1993. Movement seconded, please. Councillor Hayden. Councillor McKibben. Councillor Hayden. Very happy to move the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor McKibben. I think it's very good to do it today. I'm quite happy to second it. Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my concern and question for the director. Is about it being located over a sewer line. And I'm just after some advice on what the protocols are for when there is an application located over a sewer or any other service. I know sewer lines in general don't have formal easements, but my understanding was that they are generally treated as though there was an easement. So that if it was ever a need to Access the pipe if the pipe collapsed or something, and you had to dig it up, and you've got a structure over it, you're in a big trouble. And just what the, what our normal practice is when those sorts of applications come in. And through the chair, we 
complaining, refer those through to technical services. Uh, I'll hand over to Brent. Right, sure. um, yeah, look, in order to address those issues, and again, quite rightly, it's not desirable to have a structure over a sewer main. However, depending on the depth of the sewer main, in this case, is relatively deep. I think it's around about two metres. Um, we are asking that piers be put down either side of the actual sewer main and that to, is to stop any um, structural movement, I suppose, or earth uh, shear of the um, of the existing well, sewer main, which would be an urban wear pipe in this case. So again, with those um, conditions in place, certainly would um, alleviate any sort of concern, I would think, uh, with the shed structure. Um, being over that, over that certain in the instance that there was an issue, certainly a game like anything, it's typical in the backs of yards to actually get in and, and, and excavate mains. Uh, but there's always that potential to get in there and, and then do an underball. If you had to do an underball to, uh, you know, obviously fix, fix an issue or, or sleeve the pipe, depending on what actually happened to it. But again, it's very highly unlikely if this is peered down each side of that uh, sewer main, it takes a structural support of that shed slab. And there should in theory be no issues. Um, I just have to comment. Yes, I, I acknowledge that it, it reduces the risk of something happening, but on the other hand, it increases the consequence if something wasn't happening. And um, I think it, in general, I think we should try and avoid it. Council Trimble. Um, I apologize for asking this prior to this meeting, but has it come before council and before where? The structure was going to be built at the front yeah. and it was rejected because of the exact same reason. Yeah. Different property, but uh, the same, yeah, the same, 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 same it, it, was, yeah. it is not the same property. No. Okay. The other one was Hawks Drive too. No, I thought it was Hawks. No. Yeah. That was new, new, Brennan, new. Brennan, Brennan. Yeah. 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 I think it was a 14 Hawks Drive. Ah, okay, that's what I remember. Walk side. Have a car port on the side and going forward to the building line. Side and across the sewer line. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what different yeah. the the invert level of the depth right. of the actual sewer mains, uh, in essence, basically in the assessment. And again, it's okay. indicated there is no uh, easement over these old like mains, but again, as Ian has indicated. Uh, probably preferably should be treated like that, but in this instance, you know, very hard. I suppose you want to challenge that, you know, there's, a, there's an engineering solution, and it's not uncommon in a lot of council areas, uh, albeit, you know, some, somewhat not desirable, but it's achievable. Thank you, Jim. So, if it could have been the 14 port strike, come back and say, I think you need to make modifications. No, that's like the shed is the modification, so it already has been included ah, this yeah. to when they were building it no, um, no. slightly on, on an angle. Mm -hmm. That's why it came back. Okay. Picked it up during the inspection. Ah. Hawks Drive also was forward of the building line, so that was another issue. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Had the sewer and forward of the building line. I think it was the forward yeah. of the building. Yeah. 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 Any more councillors? I'll put the motion all in favour. Okay. Are against? Councillors are against. against. Other councillors were for. The motion is passed. All right. Uh, item 0510. Everyone waits to both front and later plans and recommendations of item 510 of the seat of information. I propose to alter it. Resolution is for the council delegate to the general manager. An amount of up to 200,000 from the waste reserve to purchase an appropriate front end loader machine. Um, between now and the end of 2022 23, if one becomes available, so that we don't have to come back again. You set up the ground, you got it? Up to now, you got it? Yeah. I don't mind it's 180, but I feel a bit of in my own. Second hand, sorry, second hand machine, I should have said if I didn't say. You can give a new one for 200,000 or why? Oh, yeah. Chinese. 
Uh, the player could come up. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, does the page the two hundred thousand from what I heard? The council say. So this one doesn't quite make sense yet. Sorry. Well, sorry, to utilize an amount of up to 200,000 from the weight reserve to purchase an appropriate second hand funding loader machine. Um, if one becomes available, do we need it within the 2022-23 year? Um, through the chair, I, I would put it in that yeah, space right. because you could possibly include it into a future off plan if it's if it's in some of May I just suggest you remove the wording second hand because and then, yeah. then have the amount up to 250,000 and then delegate it to the general manager to buy the one that's appropriately costed. Used or new? Used or new. Not just level it at second hand. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. Are you moving your proposing? I'm proposing as a turn. I'll second the motion. resolution. Before we go down that path, I think as part of what we need to include in this is, and I think the big ticket, and tell me if I'm wrong, gents, is the attachments that go with it. So, and can I, yeah, including attachments because that's going to have an impact on the. Price of the machine itself. Mm. Could we have 250 instead of 200? Well, I think we need some advice. I mean, there has been some advice on the values of the three mayor regarding technical services directly. What is the order? Sorry, well, who's who handling it? No, no, well, I'll start. And um, the, the 180,000 has been based on an appropriate second hand machine that, that our works supervisor has looked, has, has looked at. Um, as council will be aware, there are a number of things that we need to take into consideration when we look at a piece of the plan, especially the WHS requirements. And when you're at a tip, they become over and above what we would consider normal. Um, so, so the um the the way that Chris and Damien have looked at this at the hundred and eighty thousand was at that second hand level. Now the fact that if you're gonna house something like that at the tip, it should just stay at the tip and not be removed from the tip, says that it doesn't necessarily need to be a new machine. Um so if we can get one for the two hundred thousand, I'm just I'm just mindful of um, utilising the waste fund when we yeah. we certainly have a number of other things that we need to do. I would I'm the first one to say give me as much as you possibly can, as as Chris would say. But I think that having that limit and if it's over that, we come back to you is probably the a better way. Like it just caps it to a point where we're being responsible. I believe. So what do we believe it should be the cap? I might think 200 is, is the appropriate right. of this. Well, one. I was leaving 180 with one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I just think we need a new one at the tip yeah. track, then I think we can get some pretty good second hand mm -hmm. ones, but I defer to you, Jill. Well, I'll just say another point of consideration is we go to an auction house. Yeah. And that's the, if, if I'm limited, then obviously we don't have that capacity, do we? If it's a good machine. So I'm not saying that we should be spending over 180, don't get me wrong, but. I think the tendering threshold for local government, other than, other than a policy, a policy is 150, a tendering threshold for local government is 250. Yeah. So if you want to authorize the general manager up to, and it just gives that flexibility in an, in an option house sense for a used machine for that per se, or versus then a, let's say, an offshore type machine. Um, if it was of a used nature, nature we can't get a, a good quality used machine. 
This is where I'm coming from. So it's really, Mr. Mayor, I'm a little confused. We, is, Chris, is the particular service director talking about a limit of 200 or 250? I think he's talking about a limit of 250. So that if they're going to an auction house, yeah. that they've got some room to move up. Oh. But through the chair, you give council, you council delegation to 200,000. That, that, that is how yeah. you, You've already got a, you've already got a 20% variation yeah. in the range that, yeah. that the plan coordinator advised from the price that you've got for second hand dealers and auction out there. So, and we're putting another $20,000 on top of that. So it's a $25,000 variation in the range. How much more do you want? So like if you can't get it for that, What's this bloke? This bloke's figures are wrong. Oh, well, what's the new one that's going to be last longer? We don't want a new one. We're going to sit out there for about six hours a day. We don't do nothing. We don't want a new one. Through the chair, based on the same report, they say that you need 280 for a new one. Yeah, 250 yeah. doesn't help you. You don't want to be like, oh, I think that the, 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 limit, the limit at 200 from me is. is is acceptable, and if we need to come back, we come back. Right. Yeah. All right. No, I have a second for this. Put it on the motion. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Hayden. You can't second it. Um, no, no, we're, I, I've spoken to it before. You know my position. I think we should move ahead on this rather than have to come back to council again for another consideration. I think we just could move on this. We had this trial for a purpose. Uh, we know we have to improve the state of the tip. Um, this has clearly come out as the winner, um, as we, as I think some of us foreshadowed originally. So let's just move ahead. Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Ridley. Um, sure. I, I accept the report that, that says that uh, the, the front end loaner uh, performed better than the telehandler. But I am concerned about, uh, on the basis of that advice, Jumping in immediately and saying, Let's try one. I, I think that's the same sort of practice or arguably a mistake that, that council has made previously, and then potentially finding that uh, either the hourly rate we have to set uh, pushes out the, the cost of running the tip, or that it just doesn't get enough use to, to justify it, or whether there might be other ways of of either tiring one in occasionally or how often is it going to be used and how many hours a day is it going to be used? Um, what money is in the, in the waste fund? Can we afford to just jump in and buy one? Um, so despite Councillor McKibben's uh, opinion that we should, uh, that the COPS advice we should go ahead and buy one, I think we, we should be looking at the finances in more detail before we make the decision. To go ahead and buy one. So you're proposing an amendment? If this is lost, I will propose an amendment that we get a further report. So you're foreshadowing. Uh, I'm foreshadowing uh, an amendment. You already have your yeah, some coffee. Yeah, I'd I'd like some more information on this. Um one that how are we financing the um one that's out there now? It's the, I thought we had the telehandle for four weeks for trial. This other one's still there. How, how are we paying for it? Um, just coming out of the tip fund. Yep. So it's just over the slather, like, and even though good. the trial's up. Well, if, if it wasn't that, it'd be the excavator or the other item of machinery or tobacco. So okay. the tip fund is still paying for it. But the beauty of having a loader is that you can also pick up from your know, late LRE. Oh, I'm not against it. But it's just but, whether we have a new one or, or whatever. So, and, and when you said about the tip for the tip, the other day when I was out there, it was actually loading gravel. Wasn't it? Like, yeah. So I know that there's multi uses of it, but if we're short of something for the gravel elsewhere, surely goodness it shouldn't be just to mine for the tip. If we need another loader at White Springs for the day only, it, it should be picked up and taken out there. Like uh, I, I, I'm listening to what's around the table, and you're going to say you can't have it out of White Springs when we've got major road works. Like, and, and that's why I think I'm going down for the second report, but I honestly think we should have a new machine. Having a new machine, we keep our mechanics down to the minimum like the original $400,000 works replacement program was, that we had the two mechanics and the one apprentice to keep the maintenance down and look at it over a long-term plan, not a 10-year plan like uh, we have some of our plant replacement. But 
and we've got to make sure we buy the right machine. And, and, and that's my concern that, you know, I was propositioned the other day about some of these um, loaders, the less than 100,000. And, and Mr. McKechnie might confirm that we had one over at Bondwood. And when they went to replace the tyres, you had to replace the wheels and the rims as well, because there's no spare parts in Australia. These are one off things, some of these models. So, a reputable model, I think we should have a report back to council against the new one, second hand one, and oh, what else? Appreciate that amendment. Can I? Can I? No race. So, sorry. Can I just? I just. Just to process. Um, remembering that there was a motion put before. Before we even um, put this mm -hmm. motion up, therefore it's not an amendment. It's the motion. So yeah, yeah. Councillor Tucker is in fact an amendment to this, yeah. not a foreshadowed amendment. It's an amendment to this. So if you want to put the amendment, you can put the amendment. Right. Obviously, I think Penny Wolf wants to speak to the councillor, the councillor Graham. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've just got a question. Before the decision was made to trial both these pieces of equipment, how did you choose those two pieces of equipment? Surely some of that was done beforehand. JFRS report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, that's a very good point. We trial to be telling you anyone, we trial the low ladder, and then heads down the low ladder. It's much, far much more practical. Then you said the equipment could be used too. So how did you now in on the, those two for the trial? Sure. So I've got a bit of a lay down area there. Like, you re, uh, reclaim material, like uh, might be road base or the bitumen or whatever it may be, timbers and the lay down area. So it gives that flexibility of being able to also pick out road base, pepper sprinkle the internal roads if need be, or go in, load trucks out of my, out of the actual um, reuse area or road base area. And for other yeah, yeah. Can, can I just, can I just I'll, I'll the question? <laughs> um, the question is why did we come to those two pieces of plan? We had a consultant come in and do a an assessment of our tip. Yes, and yes. from that, he proposed two options to assist staff and operators at that staff to undertake work that could be used in a number of ways. And the telehandler and the phone loader were the two options that were. So we've had all that information. We have done that. We have done that. Mm -hmm. Could I add to the gentleman? And the comment was that the equipment being used currently at the TIP. This is the JR, JSRS report, yep. which we commissioned after a, um, a motion by Council McCarthy. Sorry, okay. yep. anyway. But um, the, the equipment currently being used really wasn't appropriate. And we should look at trialing a telehandle or a front end loader. I think the inference was we'd probably come out as the front end loader what would be the more appropriate. Um, yes, it wouldn't be used all the time, but it was really necessary to clean up the tip properly because it needed something of that nature to get this, push the stuff properly in, in the pits, et cetera, and uh, to be able to do all the work out there. So we're not sort of starting from scratch. It's been through a recommendation process from the consultant and all the way up. The, the, that report is also on the council yeah. portal, to, or yeah. if you, if it's... Right. <laughs> you have a question, Councillor Bates? This is the fourth time that we've seen this. Previously at our last general council meeting, mm -hmm. we'd all agreed with Councillor McCarthy's recommendation and his motion that we would go forward with this and now we're, we're actually Infusing what we've already agreed to previously, and, and we have a motion there, and we have a have a uh, amendment put up by Councillor Tucker. Can you just reiterate your amendment? Uh, I'm not sure if I actually have to do it, but uh, that that a further report be provided on the costs of uh, purchasing the. <coughs> Purchasing or, or, or the options of purchasing or hiring a front end, front end loader as required. Um, and uh, the, the impact on uh, the cost of tip operations mm -hmm. and the available budget in the way. So we can, I'm sure we can improve that wording, but that's the gist of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. 
just waiting to come up for probably. Right. We have a seconder for that motion. Sorry, that amendment. You happy with that? Yes. You have a second now? Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you wish to say any more? Uh, well, I, only to repeat, I said that I'm just concerned that uh, we seem to be in the habit of, of just jumping into, into in these situations and buying stuff without uh, fully considering the, the costs of the purchase and operations and the available budget. And I just think we should go through that process before deciding to go ahead and purchase this. Thank you. Councilman McKechnie. I don't have anything to add. I just check your line of discussion. Anyone else wish, wish to speak to this? Councilman McCarthy. Um, Mr. Mayor, I understand where we're all coming from. But one of the things that the report from the uh, contractor for our specialist out that did, we've got to cover over the stuff. So depending on what comes in, you've got to have something there all the time to get over. But what I tried to get, and I'll need the information from the general manager, is rather than take this money out in one go, can't we have a, a thing that we can possibly look at the purchase of a new one or a high late model one? And pay it off over three years out of the tip fund. In other words, say out of three installments. And that I know we've taken the money for the power out of the tip, we've taken the uh, living treasure wall out of the tip fund. But this way, if if the thing come up at say 250,000, you take 60,000 a year out of it. Like, so whether you're taking the internal loan or you come up that we, I thought you can actually hire, uh, get those, that sort of. Um, Package from the actual so, suppliers. Are you speaking to the amendment or are you yes? I'm to trying them? to speak to the amendment okay. in, in respect that we know why we need this machine and we need it there all the time. But for me, I need to know why we can't have a new one and why we can't have it that we pay th three installments. Is there something in the local government act that stops? It? No, it's the, the amendment doesn't talk about money I, at all. It talks I know about that. detailing costs of purchasing and hiring. Yes. So that's Councillor McKibben. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I can understand well, the council Clark's position, but um, I think we have to give the, the staff um, some credibility in being able to determine appropriate uh, piece of equipment to service this. We had an independent report, as I said. Um, it appears the piece of equipment staff already identified will not be utilized all the time and therefore they're recommending a second hand piece of equipment um, i think it's important that we also appreciate that part of the jsrs report was that we ultimately purchase a waybridge which is going to be an expensive item for this this tip site and um i think um Obviously, staff will have to take account of the fact that second-hand equipment may require, may require some um, additional maintenance requirements than new, and I appreciate what uh, Councillor McCarthy was saying, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that, uh, as I said, I think we're going to have to probably purchase a waiver in the future, so we have to look carefully at how we're spending our money. I'm also assuming, and I, through you, Mr Mayor, maybe the technical services manager uh, could reply to this, that if we have this piece of equipment on site, then we will be able to utilize equipment that is currently utilized on site, such as uh, excavators, et cetera, uh, more productively on our road network and in other activities than having to go to the tip all the time. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, for this year, that's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now I'll switch to speak to this uh, amendment. You've already, you've already moved it. Right. I'm just but. We'll get to that. Okay. Okay, you can have your right right reply now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I, I acknowledge what uh, Councillor McGibbon says. Um and, and, and that's 
really my point is how much money is in the waste fund? What other commitments do we have? Do we have enough to do the wide bridge and the power connection and the front end load? Um, that, that's why I think it would be prudent on council's part and, and responsible in, in financial terms to, to have all of that clearly set out to make sure that we can afford it without impacting on other things that need to be done. And I think we could continue to hire for another month or two, or we might even be able to get a report back to the December meeting to, to say uh, what impact this will have on the waste product. All right, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Against? The amendment is lost. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Against Councillor Tucker is against. The motion is passed. Now, at this point, I'm going to bring with Council's approval general business forward so that we deal with everything in open and then we go into closed session for that one item. So we now move on to general business. It was like I'll give each councillor an opportunity to go to Bring up any general business or start with you, Councillor McKinley? I don't have any general business. You, Councillor McKinley? Um, no, I don't have any uh, general business at this stage. No. Councillor Timber? No, I don't have anything at this point. Councillor McCarthy? Oh, age and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I think that council need to start looking at upgrade of the reef road with drainage and prep for the soil in the future due to the activity up around the reef area. That's one. We need to set a metrics on which roads were graded so we can come back and check on it. I thought a road wasn't graded three years ago. I still stick to my guns. And I think the potholes were patched where they go out to the butte, throw this thing. To my knowledge, the road was never graded for three years ago. And I think we should have a sheet like we've done the Damien, so we can look up when the road was graded. And I thought our thing said that we grade the roads every 12 months. It used to be every six months. And then we changed when Mr. Carney was here. Uh, the yeah, there's, a, there's a number of levels of service that we provide yep. for each of those areas. So I'm not arguing with them. I'm just asking that we set a metrics up so we can check. Well, I think that's also very cognizant of what weather types we get at any one time too. It's very reactive on those seal road maintenance. So if it oh. doesn't need it, it doesn't get it. I, I realise that. We go out to our rate right bars and we say we're going to try and grade the road every 12 months. So. And I've got a budget that I work with. So yep. that's the way it works, unfortunately. So okay. it, gets, it gets a bit of gravel, it gets potholes fixed, and that's the way I've been working. But I don't want to come back to this council and be arguing that. The road was graded three years ago and, and have to support my actions. I, I'd like to go to a metric and say, look, here it hasn't been done. Well, I know the council filled the holes in with the ute, it was done well, and that's all I needed at the time. But as far as I was concerned, that road wasn't graded. I, I can even tell you the people have graded it and how many staff are on it. But, well, uh, anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to. As I said, I did have that discussion with him. I said, yeah, I thought it had been graded. Right. I looked up the records. It was actually patched last time. So yep. no, that's right. I think it was between a patch and a grade. Yep. Um, what we need to do is eliminate the stupidity in the council on Lowes Mount Road. Last time. Would we you like to rephrase that? Well, you're I'll making, stand you're by making that. assertion about people's capability and behaviour in okay. the council. Well, the stands. And it still stands there. Okay. On Lowes Mount Road, Point we've done a terrific job on Sue and the road. Point of order. Point of order. Okay. On Lowes Mount Road, we've done a terrific job of Sue and reconstructing about eight kilometres of the road. But if anyone will go down there now and have a look, we never brush the edge of the road off. We've got it all line marked, and all that line marked is all scrunched up in bits of bitumen. We need to do this better. We didn't used to do it in the past. The road was burned. So how do we get to this stage of doing that? I'm pretty sure the road was burned. 
and it was brimmed right to the edges. Now it does take a little bit for the actual stone to bed in. So I think in that time frame between the wet weather and when it was lying mark, certainly a lot of stone has kicked off, and particularly on corners. So okay. you can't always be ahead of the game with having a broom or another broom that services in that pitching and ceiling through full mode. So getting ahead of the game of windows of dry weather and having that done at the time, I think was a bit uh this go with difficult, I suppose, to resource getting a broom ahead of them. And I, I, look, I, I do apologize, and I say in some areas it is not as good as it could be, it will be picked up certainly when we do these new sections. Uh, so I think and that did happen. And, and again, the gravel does pick out on the edges of the road and does cover line work. So in new line work, it needs a double coat normally. I don't know if that's what we just, we just put in one, one single foot, and the remaining one will be done. So we can go through and do that and refresh your coat and they come back and. And do the new work down the bottom end of the last railroad. I take on board the excuses, and what I'm saying is, didn't happen. Well, that's the yeah, edge that's of the road the in many the spots. Place. I got a serve from a rate pay, and she was right. Then I feel like she's she's dead bottom. right. You yeah. can go out there now and you can see where bottom and bitumen's there, and there's a heap of loose gravel over the top, and it was never burned on to the edge of the, the surface that we've done. Well, so it was a great. Okay. I think this is not a particular. No, no, we've got to sort this out because well, we spend a lot. Can I suggest we, we spend a lot of money on this, Mr. Mayor. I, I and, know, and but this is kind of abusive. I'm not it's not a, abusive. Okay, it's a point, fact. Point of order on the mannerisms, please. <clears throat> it's a fact. No, it's not a fact. But anyway, can I, Mr. Mayor, can I suggest that Council McCarthy and the Technical Services Director might do go to the site and inspect it, and then come back to the report. A joint position for what to occur because I don't think this conversation has been constructive. I, don't, I agree with you, Councillor McKillop. Move on to your next point, if you wish, please. Okay. Um, so, if I could, maybe the technical services director could make time to meet with Councillor McCarthy on site. Happy to do that. Okay. I think we need to set up a metrics on these flooded roads. Um, we spoke about some today and, and uh, we've nominated Sewell's Road, so that drops uh, another one out of Sewell's Creek. Um, can council get a um, uh, end cost of what it costs us to do the Noonan Sewell uh, crossing at one stage, please? A, a final cost, like, yeah. There will, there will be an end of project report, won't there, please? But yes. On, on top of schedule and mm -hmm. price. Okay. And as you see with the way that the road vegetation at the moment, we've mentioned before about the possibility of a second back, but we already own the slasher. We just went when the mile was down. It's a consideration that we could have a look at purchasing a second tractor to do mowing or um, yeah, slashing or maybe leasing one, something like that, at these peak times. I could, Mr. Mitchell, I'm not very comment on this. Um, just putting on my other hat, Peter yeah. Mountain Macquarie, um, we're very aware that one of the means of Chilean needle grass and African love grass spreading is by slashing. So we have to be careful. We try and identify whether there's any there first because it spreads like anything with a slash, especially with, at this time of year when it's all in seed. I just make that observation. Just be careful. I know oh, we have to we have yeah. to slash, but yeah. please be careful. I realise that, but there's things like the yeah. Conway ground. And, oh yeah, uh, uh, the ground on the approach to town. I'm not saying let's slash. I'm just saying. I, yeah. I know you brought that up before, but yeah. that'll do anything. Yeah, too. Big thing. No, no, no. Hey, Councillor Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a, a couple of things I've I've asked about. On at least two previous occasions, up to six or more months ago, and I was anticipating that they would be uh, reports for today's meeting, and I just want to find out if uh, if they're progressing or when we can expect reports on them. The first one is uh, Richards Park, in the section of the park where the pipe is completely blocked and the water overflows across the top of the park, and it is totally overgrown and boggy and unmaintainable as it is, it's an absolute mess. 
And uh, I'll suggest that we either need to clean the pipe out or perhaps remove the pipe and, and revert back to an open waterway. Uh, when can we get a report on those options? Uh, pretty chilly. I'm looking happy to go and look at that and see what can be done. Uh, I'll bring something back to December. Thank you. Yep. And uh, the, the second one is uh, a piece of land that council owns on the north side of Tasman Street, where I think there may be potential uh, to, to sell an extra one, possibly two residential blocks. It's on the corner of the Stevenson Place subdivision. And uh, if someone could have a look at that and provide some advice on whether it's feasible and whether it's financially viable. Um, through the chair, happy to take it on notice. The, the issue to start with is that low lying area that's there and whether it's um, a what they call a blue line on the map rather than anything else. So, and, and that's why I say it. One, I think one block would be achieved without any problem from that water course. The second one may need some modifications to the water course. But uh, if, if the advice says no, it's just not feasible, then fine. But uh, yeah, I have raised a couple of times previously, and I thought it would be in today's agenda and just uh, wondering how soon we can get that, get some advice, knowing the, the demand that there is for residential land. Give it a chair. I knew about it. That's on me, and I'll I'll take that up. Uh, early in the new year, you think? Um, yeah, let's go with that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's great. That's right. Yes, I've got a, a couple here, and I'd like to ask the technical services director, if I may. Um, the Hazel Grove Chowanai Road near Eden Creek Bridge, where that's broken away, and it then ends that to forty two. Uh, yeah, you're right, it certainly is. I'll put people on notice in civil resources. It means I've got signs and hazard signs in the middle, but it does, you're right, it does need to be repaired. Um, the Sills Creek crossing, maybe Dog Yard, I'd like to see a bridge put over that instead of that low, low base pole that that's constantly flooding and constantly causing issues for the residents of Fox. Think it's really made of whatever it is. Yeah, okay. That so one. Um, the only issue with the uh, natural disaster funding is it is in place like the one. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at actually what the cost is to put you know, that structure while it's on your temporary fix to get residents through. And it's the very reality that if you get another rainfall event that it may wash the road base out. Mm -hmm. But it'll only fund like the life, and that'll be a decision in the council. Which, um, certainly, a structure of some sort needs to be built in the budget. Um, it's noted within our that, that well, let's not call it a matrix, but call it a living, breathing old plan that has been identified. Also, um, the two culvert bridges, the culverts across Mozart, there where um, Long Island Farm Creek and Fish River, there's a fair bit of breakage happening at the moment there. And um, I wonder whether there could be some resources uh, just to do a bit of repair on the it's getting pretty rough that section. We might just have a close look at those in regard to the right storm event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's any uh, big watch out for the ground of uh, getting some Yeah, okay. And um, also, I'm just bringing up that signage that I'd mentioned on our previous works about the approach to the rest areas at Black Springs and the toilet sign and the RFS sign on that post. I know that we written that down before and um I suppose this is getting someone out there today. Yeah for the GI get the report out to the staff I've just checked if those signs have arrived and giving them up. So and I also have one last and I think um if the mayor gives permission that I may speak to council and Tibbon um regard because this regards up in the quarry um I've just noticed along a lot of the roadsides recently especially on the Abcombe Road where I'm not sure who's been doing the spraying, but someone has been spraying the natives. So there's a substantial amount of trees, acacias, black wattles, et cetera, that have been sprayed. And then right, right next to where all of those trees have been, or that are now dead, um, there's a lot of black. The other, um, I don't know what, weed, 
broom. No, 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 not broom. The the white one that looks like a wild tuna thing. Um, oh, yeah. Bunions. Uh, Bunions? Yeah. That, Aaron's right. Bunions. That's growing mad everywhere since St. George, St. George Wart. St. George Wart. Yeah. And these natives have just all been sprayed and they're all dead. I think I brought it up before mm. opposite Swabbits Road, then opposite the cemetery coming into Oberon. I did notice the unit that was going along spraying, the white four-wheel drive with the um, blue spray unit on the back. But um, they're not just spraying weeds, they're spraying our natives. And I think that's... Well, not meant to be spraying the natives. The only problem we have sometimes is where the blackberries are inclined with the natives. Oh, there was no blackberries there, then. I've got all the photographs. Okay. So send them through. Send them through to me. Yep. I'll speak to that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. All right. Um, that brings us to the end of the open session. In accordance with the Local Government Act of 1993 and Local Government General Regulation 2005, in the opinion of the General Manager, the following business is of a kind as referred to in Section 10A2 of the Act and should be dealt with in a part of the meeting, closed to the media and the public. So I move and second the meeting confidentially. Council Hayden, Council on the All in favour? Uh, Mr. Snell, would you stop recording, please? We're moving into confidential at Uh, while the recording has stopped, there was one confidential motion started, and that was stabilization services for the works program for 2022 slash 08. And the recommendation that was uh, the you know, resolution was the council accept the tender submissions P22 slash 8 from both stabilized pavements of Australia and down at EDI works for private limited for the optional. Provision of providing full or partial stabilization services for capital maintenance, natural disaster recovery, and transport for New South Wales and RMCC repair works. May the general manager be authorized to sign the contractual documents. That brings us to the end of this works committee, and I close the meeting at 3:53 p.m. Thank you, councillors, and thank you for everyone listening on Zoom.